Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, brought to you by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm back again, baby. So happy Saturday. I'm in South Florida. It's actually sunny outside. It's not raining yet. But I have a new rant today. Before I jump in, we just crossed 2,500 subscribers. So thank you so much. We want to get to 3,000 by the end of August. That is our goal. We had a great July. Brought in over 1,500 new members of the family. Let's get us to 3,000. Do what you can. Share it. Content. Like. Subscribe. Ring that bell. And get the word out there about Come On Now, the podcast, Rudy's Rants, Combat Corner, Come On CFL, and everything that we do. But let's jump right on in. You knew I had to talk about it. It's got to be about Caitlin Clark again. But this is coming from a different perspective. We were very, very clear about our thoughts. Myself, Nick, we gave our opinion about the many different reasons that Caitlin Clark should have been on Team USA. But beyond the fact there were the marketing reasons, she's clearly the best guard in the WNBA. She has the best numbers of any guard in the WNBA when you put it all together. She's been dominating the game. I mean, the month of, Ju- month of July, before they went into the Olympic break, she was averaging 20, 12, and 6. Or it was 22, 12, and 6, something like that. Recently, actually this was on August 9th, a, a, a reporter for the USA Today, Christine Brennan, did an article on Team USA. And we said that people weren't going to care if Caitlin Clark wasn't there. Yes, when you use that terminology, obviously there will be some people that care. But the vast majority of people who have been watching the WNBA this calendar year, since May of 2024, are people who came on board because of Caitlin Clark. The WNBA, to the vast majority of the people in this country, is irrelevant. It does not matter. No one cares. In steps Caitlin Clark, and now look what you have. You have a viewership that has grown by 400%. You have games that are being watched at a level that's not been done in the history of the league. And literally the top 10 games or around the top 10 games that have been played in terms of TV ratings are generated by games, including Caitlin Clark. When she's not on the floor, she's not on the when she's not on TV, the ratings do revert back to what they were last year and the year before that. They are not the 1.5 million viewers or the 2 million viewers or the 1 million viewers. It goes back to the 200,000 viewers, the 300,000 viewers. So while, yeah, no one cares is a, is a general statement, the reality is the mass majority of the people watching her today, watching the WNBA today, are because of her. You can deny it all you want. You can not like the data, not like the facts. That is the reality. And we said before the Olympics, no one would watch comparably to what they're as as they watch everything else and watch the WNBA. The first two games, Peacock releases the the the, the, the ratings: three million versus Japan, two point one million versus Belgium. Since that day, they have not released ratings for women's basketball games. They've released ratings for gymnastics, for track, for the men. Everyone else is getting 10 million viewers. They thought they were posting a win. And then people did their investigation work and realized that in 2012, the women's Olympic team drew over 10 million people. So this is not a win. In fact, it's an embarrassment. Caitlin Clark was drawing more people in college. Caitlin Clark's drawing drew 3.44 million for the WNBA All-Star game. But let's take a look at what Christine Brennan had to say. Prior to the uh, the Australia, the semifinal Australia win. Let's see here. Boom, boom. The U.S. women's team is the most dominant team in any sport in the world, men's or women's, and has now advanced to its eighth consecutive gold medal 
game. The Americans have won the previous seven, and there's no reason to think they won't win the eighth on sa- Sunday. But there were only 18 journalists hanging around the massive mix zone in the bowels of the Bercy Arena Friday evening to speak with head coach Cheryl Reeve after the game when the night before the U.S. men's comeback over Serbia, the same arena was packed. What does that tell you? It tells you that no one cares. The media doesn't even care. There were so many. Why were there so many empty Olympic family seats? The best seats in the house left untaken for the entire semifinal game. Why, when this team is just so majestic, is there so little buzz about them at these games? Why do heads turn for the track stars and the gymnasts and the swimmers and the U.S. women's soccer team, who just happened to win gold today, by the way? Congratulations, ladies. Great job, but not for them. And going back a couple of weeks, why just before the Olympics began did the U.S. men's basketball press conference draw well over 100 reporters while the US, while the women's attracted perhaps 20 sitting in the first two rows? We know why. We all know why. And Miss Brennan hits it on the head. Because the U.S. basketball team left the women who would have changed this all at home. If it wasn't clear before, it certainly is now. Caitlin Clark should have been here. The attention this team should have, the crowds, the interest, it's not there because she's not here. This is all in the article. Go to usatoday.com. The U.S. committee had the power to give the women's basketball the most magnificent global platform it's ever had, and it failed. And it failed. This is what we have been saying now for how long? This is what we were telling people for how long? They had less than 12,000 people at the semifinal game versus Australia. I'm not reading that. That's what I know. They had less than 12,000. That's less than they had in the quarterfinals. That's less than the quarterfinals. And you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me that there's another reason for this. They're in they're in Paris now. That arena holds 15,000 and change. And you can't sell out a semifinal game? Ask yourself this. What would happen if... Or what will happen? Because it's not if, it's what will happen. Heck, what did happen when Simone Biles left Olympic competition in 2021 once you got to take a case of the twisties? Now, I am not going to speculate as to the ratings because I don't know them. I'm not even, I'm not looking them up. But I know the feeling. I know <clears throat> the emotion. I know that the excitement around the gymnastics competition went like this when Simone Biles withdrew. I know how people felt. I know it wasn't the same. I know that when you look at what's going on here, you see a difference. This is a this is also in the article. Were Clark here playing even five minutes a game? Reporters would have flocked to see her. I'm thinking of the Brazilian reporter who asked me in the first week why Clark was not here. This is from a, a reporter from Brazil. She wanted to see her and interview her. I'm thinking of the Australian journalist who said the same thing. So Australian journalist, Brazilian journalist both said, Why isn't Caitlin Clark here? I want to interview her. Look what you just did, Team US, Team USA committee. Look what you did. They were going to market your girl, our girl, our American girl around the world. And y'all screwed that up. And don't tell me, oh, there's always, there's always 2028. Things guaranteed in life. You can't guarantee health. You can't guarantee injuries. You can't guarantee anything. So the assumption of guarantees, we don't know what will be in 2028. We have no idea. 
Think about th think about the fact that Noah Lyles left the team this week at, after you know being diagnosed with COVID, and he still ran the two hundred, which I I don't know really why that was allowed or covered up um, for you know allowing him to run because look, COVID is not the same as it was a number of years ago, but still it's it's people don't want to catch it, <laughs> and there's still a stigma attached to it. And the reality is he ran with COVID and he was around other athletes and he could have gotten them. He could have given them COVID and yet he still ran. And then it comes out that he has COVID that day. And, but look what happens when he's not competing in the four, four by 100, the excitement around the four by 100 was gone. And then they, they completely botched the handoff, but Noah Lyles brings excitement that otherwise doesn't exist. Superstars bring excitement that otherwise doesn't don't doesn't exist. This woman, Christine Brennan, has covered the U.S. women's Olympic basketball team in 10 Olympic Games before this one. And she's seen this over and over again. The relative ghost town of a mixed zone Friday was so predictable. I wrote about it this when Clark was passed over for the Olympics in early June. And sure enough, it has happened to get journalists from around the world flocking to a venue when so many other sports are going on. There has to be something more a huge name, a personality, a storyline, something, something. USA Basketball had all of that in Caitlin Clark and decided not to use it. Yeah. There you have it. This is from a USA Today writer who covers this, who's covered this, ten covered the Olympics for 10, 10 Olympics. This woman must be in her 60s. I don't know how I mean, yeah, she's it looks kind of old. She's got to be in her 60s if she's covered 10 Olympics. That's 40 years of Olympics. And she wrote this. I didn't write this. This is this is from a journal, an American journalist covering this for the USA Today. She's telling you what reporters around the world are telling her. She's telling you. What the what it looks like there. She's telling you that there are empty seats. The best seats in the house are empty. She knows that. I mean, the attendance was eleven thousand nine hundred and change against Australia. Was, was, was there really eleven thousand nine hundred people there? I don't know. I didn't watch the game. I really didn't watch the game. I have no idea. But I can tell you this: what this proved is everything that I said that Nick said, that Stephen A. Smith said, that Shannon Sharp said, that every man said. Instead, we got to listen to the Monica McNutts, the Dondrea Carters, the Carolyn Becks, the Chinia Gumakes, all these anti Caitlin Clark women who have made a point to tell us how she doesn't belong, how she hasn't earned it, while you're trying to build your sport, which has been an epic and colossal failure for 27 years, and you reject the opportunity to build the sport in the grandest stage in the world. It's mind-blowing. But I'm glad this reporter wrote this because this is nothing more than what we've been saying since June when they announced this team. And I did think for a second that Clark would be included because there are multiple players with injuries that should not have them even competing. But they wanted to so badly because the Olympics mean more to them than their, their WNBA franchises. So Nafisia Collier, who was injured the entirety going into the All-Star break and played three minutes in the All-Star game, magically has been starting every single game on the Olympic team. Diana Taurasi, who's clearly not any good anymore, started the first few games and then got benched finally because she was so bad. Chelsea Gray is a skeleton of herself, shell of herself. He's been injured. And you left Caitlin Clark home. And you know what? It is what it is. The women are going to win the gold medal tomorrow, and I want them to win the gold medal tomorrow. I don't not want them to win. I want them to win. They're going to win. I'm an American. But the odds of me watching it, 
closely or by accident. My kids start school Tuesday, man. I got things I got to get done before Tuesday. It's not, it's not must-see TV. The men play at 3.30 today against France. That is far more must-see for me than this. But if Caitlin Clark was on that floor, it'd be must-see TV. What are your thoughts on this article by Christine Brennan of the USA Today? What are your thoughts on what she said? What do you thought? I mean, give me, give me your feedback. Love to know what you have to love to know what you have to think about it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment and ring that bell. Come on now, baby.